What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. You guys are hanging with the dudes in blue. It's a Thursday night edition, a bonus episode for you. It's episode 113. Hope you guys are doing well on this Thursday night. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me, as always, Antonino. What is up, everyone? Dude, big day hey, yesterday. Folks. Yeah, I was, uh, that was unbelievable. So as people start to pour in, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a little bit about the game, what happened on the pitch, what happened off the pitch. And, uh, we got some stadium news to talk about, right, dude? It's gonna be, it's yeah, gonna be a good episode on. for a, for a midweek episode, right? I'm kind of pumped. Like a, it's like a juicy steak. It's gonna be like a nice medium rare filet mignon. It's like, it's got a little bit of everything. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be, uh, we had like, we had like, we had love. We had fight. We had passion. We had we had like sadness. We had happiness. Everything. We had like stifling first half of nothingness. It was unbelievable. It was a very eventful day. That that is that today has been like almost as eventful because my cell phone has not stopped from like I would say nine a.m. this morning. As it shouldn't. And guys, as you're coming in. Smash the like button for Antonino getting engaged and popping the question at Yankee Stadium last night to his wonderful now fiance Lauren. I am so freaking happy for you guys. It's not even funny. Uh, dude, that was, uh, that was fun. She was totally unexpected, uh, unexpected and it was just awesome. Like, if you guys haven't seen the view from the blue, you guys can see the whole thing as it went down or you can just go anywhere near NYCFC and it is plastered all over the place. Fantastic. There's like two tweets. There's a behind the scenes. The behind the scenes was actually pretty cool because I wasn't expecting that. That was a great – yeah, that um, was great. That was like a huge cut of their – um that was probably the better first half highlight out of that whole thing. <laughs> That's a, well, you do. They only play – like if you watch the behind the scenes, it's kind of funny because like they only showed like five seconds of the first half and then like – Right to right to you guys. It was great. It was fantastic. Yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So right off the bat, let me just say hi to some of these comments here, dude. Um, and they're, dude, they're all they're all saying congrats. So um, who's who's here? Let me hear it. We got Joey. We got Coco. Sorry, Coco. Uh, Henry, Eric, Christian with the notification squad. Steven Berg, David saying hi. Christian, as always, Chris Martinez, TJ, Jorge, everybody's saying hello Jeez. and congratulations. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thursday Thank night. You. Yes, yes. Yeah, so Thursday we're gonna night. we're gonna have some fun. Uh, Anthony Merced, dudes in blue, contributor extraordinaire, is saying congrats, dude. What is going on, Anthony? Thanks, sir. Um. So, uh, yeah. Oh, dude, l- let me just get a couple of little housekeeping things out of the way. Yeah, let's if do that's it. okay with you. Sure. So right off the bat, um, obviously, congratulations to Anthony. For those of you that are just popping in on the engagement, that is absolutely fantastic. I got a couple shout outs to give. Uh, number one on Twitter, Adam, IU grad 2001 for for predicting two wins on Twitter. He has now got a tweet to us every match right before the match because it's yeah. working. Yeah. Well, if that's the case, if that's working, then. That means I have to propose every game. <laughs> every game. Every halftime. <laughs> Save it for if we're down at the half. Um, yeah, we'll keep it, keep it under wraps. So, so Adam, shout out to you, my friend. Uh, sorry we couldn't get to you on Monday. We had Ian on the show. And uh, Andres Hernandez, big shout out to Andres Hernandez on uh, Twitter as well for actually making the whole Ian Joy thing happen. He was <laughs> like, you guys should totally have Ian Joy on the show on uh, Monday night. And I was like, Ian? He was like, yeah. So, Andres, thank you so much for that. Thank you, sir. And one more shout out um, to our friend from Section 109, Patrick Shields, for hooking us up with these awesome, awesome FIFA World Cup cups from the Morocco Iran game. These are fantastic. This was this was amazing. I was not expecting it. Yeah. Big thank yeah, you and a shout out to him. He made the trip all the way over there just to get me these cups. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> He gave it to a couple of guys in our section, and uh, that was really nice of him, dude. That was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really. Just uh, one of the nicer people I think I've ever come across in my entire life. Like the dude is like just simply one of the nicest people, always good to talk to, very knowledgeable about the sport. 
uh, knowledgeable about a lot of stuff. So anything you you want to talk to the guy about, he's more than happy to. He's very worldly. Entertain you. Very worldly. Anyway, so uh, thanks thanks to all those uh, to all of you guys on Twitter and and Facebook, and give us the follow if you don't already. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Dudes in Blue. It's really really easy to uh, to find us there. All right, dude. Let's get into this match here. Okay, Do so. It. Very similar in a lot of ways, dude, to the uh, Red Bull match on Sunday night. Very, very flat first half. Uh, good halftime, uh, a good halftime chat. And then the team comes out and uh, the subs come in and produce. It's like uh, an absolute miracle. Yeah, and I think in soccer you see that quite a bit. You see a lot of games where the first half is kind of teams feeling each other out. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out what the defense is doing, what the offense is doing, and what they're trying to do. And then, you know, you, you can make little subtle adjustments during the half, but it's a little hard unless you have longer stoppages where you can get the team together mm-hmm. and say, hey, look, tell mm-hmm. the guys to play this way, tell the guys to switch to this formation or do this, do that. Halftime, it's a little bit easier because you have everybody's attention and you can, you know, draw up plays or whatever you need to do with the whiteboard. So... Uh, again, you're going to see a lot of these games where teams are going to be feeling each other out. And if Dome has got these, you know, different tactics he wants to implement, uh, you could best bet the first half is going to be, you know, defensively trying to stay sound and stopping the first goal from, you know, being scored on us. Uh, you know, try your usual stuff on offense. And if it's not working, then, you, you know, at halftime, something is going to change. So I, I, I honestly see that this might happen quite a bit. You're going to see a lot of first halves where uh, 0-0 or, you know, very low scoring first halves where if you're not 100% sure about your opponent and what they're doing, uh, it's just kind of the way it is with soccer just because that's the nature of the sport. Sure. And, I mean, listen, you're also you're also playing the opponent. You have time at the half to kind of regroup. And, uh, you know, you, you can officially see how the other how the other team is playing. And I mean, listen, we're talking about Montreal here, but I will, you know, credit to Montreal winning four straight matches before last night coming into uh, coming into Yankee Stadium, winning four straight. So, you know, they were kind of on a hot streak. And um, yeah, dude, I mean, the, the changes were made and the goals came. Uh, Christian Smith with a comment here. Jonathan freaking Lewis. We'll obviously talk about him uh, later on. But dude, I, I, I got to tell you, for not having David Villa, for not having... To Jury Shradi for not having Burgett to be able to throw three goals up on the board in what seemed like 15 minutes was pretty impressive when our substitutes came on and and kind of lit things up. Yeah, ab- absolutely. It's uh, it's those little the, the, again the fact that you have an uh, injury depleted roster is one thing, but you're getting offense from people who you don't typically get it from or, or haven't had the chance to because the other guys are playing in front of them. But I think we've got some big takeaways from this game. I think your biggest takeaway is you've got a legitimate offensive weapon in Ronald Moderita. As long as he's healthy, you have a weapon that can play either defense or offense at both a very high level. And he showed both in, in, in and the he game. Showed he both, showed yeah. both. So for me, that's a huge asset in, in and of itself because now you can deploy him in in a forward role, in a winger role. You you can put him. You, you might be able to put him in the midfield at times if he really has to. But um, being a, a left back, a right back, it, I don't think it matters. I think he's got enough raw talent at any spot to succeed. And he showed you with the you know, with his passing and his goals. He he is very sound. And as long as he can stay healthy, he could be a huge key coming down the stretch. Because let's face it, it, it's very seldom you make a substitution that's both offensive and defensive. You know, you, you can he's one he's one of the few players where if you're trying to shut down a game, you can put him in, or if you're trying to get a goal, you can put him in. It, it's it's a very versatile yeah. role for him, um, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing him more on the offensive side of the ball because damn, he looked good. And we need it, right? And because yeah. at this, you know, at this point, with our team being riddled with injury, unfortunately, we unfortunately we need it, um, dude. I think uh, I want to get to some of these comments here real quick. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Joey was asking, uh, was this the first game that NYCFC had with no shots on target against? I don't no. know. That's a Roddy no, Russell question. No, no. October two thousand sixteen was okay. last one. But I will say, out shooting Montreal twenty three to three. 
and seven shots on target to no shots on to no shots on target is very very impressive especially dude with with an exhausted depleted lineup for them to try to take that many shots dude i don't remember the last time we put up 20 20 plus shots no in a but match like that, that. that's it's it's really it just helps so much generate the offense because it, it gives you that momentum. And anytime you can find enough space to get a shot, it, it's it's so proactive because you can you, you can build off of that. You can feed off of that. Hey, look, I just got a chance by doing this. We can do this again and try to do it again. And you keep building on it and building on it. And uh, I'm no math magician, but uh, you, you know, majority says statistics say the more shots you put, the more likely you're going to get one to go in. And that's what happened yesterday. If you uh, score more goals shots. than the other team, you, you probably, probably win. win. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it's it's you know it's a numbers game at that point. Are you going to get twenty shots off every game? I highly doubt it. But no, there's the going to be better defenses, you, of course. Yeah. Right, and the more shots you take, though, the more rebounds you can create, uh, the more secondary scoring chances you create. That second ball is a problem for so many teams. And I think if it's a problem for a lot of defenses, it should be a strength for you. So that's something that I would like to see them work on more. Uh, you know, take a shot outside the box, and hopefully people are forward, and you can get a rebound to put in. Yep, absolutely, dude. Like I said, the more the more opportunities you take, the more opportunities will come for uh, for the ball actually ending up in the back of the net, right? So um, let's uh, let's talk about Medina's goal here, dude, because I got some comments in here about Medina. Uh, I'm gonna try to find it. Joey is asking, do you think that the goal? "Quote unquote," opens the floodgates for Medina. His reaction showed how much frustration he was able to let go of. You, you hope so. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah. dude, we we have said he hasn't been too stellar, but he is so damn hot and cold, and you just don't know what you're gonna get. Dude, it was a, f- a phenomenal goal. You, you got to hand it to the His kid. Hold up play, hold, the hold up play there was was Un- tremendous. unbelievable. And to and to dodge to, to dodge two or three defenders finding the space at the top of the box. Evan Bush couldn't even make a move. That ball just zipped right by him, didn't even phase him. So yeah. you got to give him so, credit there. Do I think it opens the floodgates, though? That remains to be seen. I need I need more games yeah. to, to be small, able to answer that. Small sample size, but I think it's a step in the right direction. It's a couple steps in the of right direction. Of course it is, dude. Game-winning goal. you got to give that to him. Uh, yeah, and I, I think he made a couple of good stops on defense where he came Afterwards. back. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So he's uh, – if it's a confidence thing with this kid, this should probably lead him on to uh, the Medina we saw in the first three or four games where getting the assist, getting that, that second ball goal, uh, finding himself in a good position. Um, yeah, he was trying to do it yesterday, too. He actually, Unfortunately, I think he blocked the Ben Sweat goal, uh, which is unfortunate. <laughs> but, uh, again, he's going he's gonna to be – his confidence is going to build. And, and I, I'm thinking that – I don't know about floodgates opening, like – I don't think you're going to see five or six goals in a row from this guy, but I think you're going to see a, a little bit of an elevated play, and I think that's going to propel him forward. I, I'm ha- listen. I'm happy for him, you know. And I, yeah. I've been, I've oh, been yeah. one, I've been one to criticize him for the last few weeks, few months, even. Um, because you, you, you we, we we talked about it on Monday. Ian Joy even said he needs to see more out of Medina. He had a hell of a game, dude. Henry is saying that yeah. this was Medina's best game so far. I I have a hard time thinking off the top of my head of a performance from Medina that we've seen where he's he's produced on offense and produced on defense. And yeah. I don't just I don't think it's been there. This is this this was it. Yeah, it was very very solid, a very well rounded game out of him. And you again, you just hope that it, this is a stepping stone and it builds forward. David is saying uh, Medina was playing like a true DP last night. I mean, yeah, I mean he he earned his money last night. I could see yeah. you, know, you could say getting the game winning goal for sure. Um, but and and dude, this was actually before the um, his goal came a couple of minutes before the Moderita substitution. Mm-hmm. So you know the 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 substitutes. Obviously, when the subs came on, when Mata and uh, and Jonathan Lewis came on, there was a, another a, another you know, burst of energy that came into the squad when they came on. But I think that goal certainly opened the floodgates for that match, so to sure. speak. That just that just opened up the game because then you, you saw, you know, you saw our, uh, Montreal trying to get forward a little bit more, which created opportunities for us. So I think yeah. in, in, the, in terms of opening the floodgates, certainly for the last 15 minutes of the match, that goal definitely did that. Yeah, for the, the later you get into a game uh, – 
playing with a lead and playing from behind are two completely different animals because you have to throw so many numbers around the field in different spots to to kind of either shore up your defense or try to strengthen your offense. And usually doing one kind of depletes the other. So playing from behind late in the game where all of a sudden you have to like, and we've seen NYCFC do this. Um, I mean, we were notorious for scoring last 15 minute goals last season uh, in the beginning of the year. Uh, you'll see teams throw numbers forward, but again, you got to be careful because it depletes your defense. And that's what we saw yesterday. They tried to put numbers forward, and all of a sudden, you catch them on the wrong foot. And we've got numbers on them, and it just creates havoc. So it's good to see. It's good. It's good soccer. It's good team soccer. It's not one individual. It's very collective, uh, especially with the following goals uh, in the oh, match. Yeah. So um, just before we get to those, I want to get to a couple a couple of other comments here, dude. Let's do it. Um, Christian is saying, can we all agree that Wallace has no place in the 11 anymore? Lewis is the truth, and T-Mac didn't look bad either. We'll talk a little bit about Tommy, but right now for Rodney Wallace. I mean, listen, the guy just comes back from World Cup. He wasn't necessarily producing so much before he left, um, but I'm still very iffy on him. Especially, dude, if you could play Ronald Matarita at left wing, leave Rodney Wallace on the bench. Yeah, I just – to me, the the first touch isn't there. I felt like a majority of the balls that were put at his feet ended up being uh, one foot or two feet too far away from him after he got his foot on it. Um, I just – I don't see the Rodney that I saw in the beginning of the year where he was, you know, burgette like and almost tr- pulling defenders away and things like that. Um, he came close yesterday, but, again, I, I, I need to see more from him if he's going to stay in the lineup. And, I, honestly, I, the only reason I think he's in the lineup is because of injuries. Could be. Uh, I mean, I, th- I don't think Lewis has an, I don't think Lewis has enough minutes under his belt yet to be a full, you know, 90 guy. Um, I think he's a high-energy player, and I think if you put a high-energy player like that in the beginning of the game – uh, if he doesn't produce, I think you end up wasting him. I think it's a wasted opportunity. Uh, for now, I'm cool with him coming off the bench, um, just to just to get him more minutes until but he gets. See, here's but here's here's know. the thing. Here here's why Wallace can be, um, a good utility player for for lack of a better term. With injuries, uh, keeping to Jury Shradi and David Villa and Burgett uh, off the pitch. Wallace coming in can kind of give you, in a sense, what Matarita can give you in that he has the experience playing defense. I mean, he's naturally uh, yeah. a left fullback, right? So if you need that extra support on defense, he's there. Offensively, I don't think he's as much of a threat as people may think he is. Um, often finds himself scored, out of position, and I just – no hasn't scored Hasn't scored in over a year. Yeah, and listen, like, again, like, we don't – I'm not saying goals are the only measuring stick here. Right. But but you expect some sort of production. Pick up an assist or a secondary assist or be an integral part of a build-up play. Why yeah. is it – why is it that when Matarita comes on the field and when Jonathan Lewis comes onto the field, they're immediately part of active scoring opportunities, scoring and assisting within yeah. minutes? Yeah. It's a. It's definitely a question. It's definitely a question of of not effort, but um, tactics and skill at the position. And and it's just maybe need a little more training. Maybe it's you know layover from the World Cup where I mean he didn't get any hardly any minutes there. So you know that's that's two weeks of of not really game situation. So I can see where that's a little bit of a, an issue. But uh, for me. If you want to start Lewis, I'm down with that. Now that I know you can put Mata up there, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that happening. Uh, just trying different things out for now. I think everybody is sound enough now to the point where you can experiment a little bit and still not be too detrimental to the the, the lineup and the the cohesion that's going on. I think everybody is pretty much gel with everybody at this point, and everybody knows how everybody plays. Yep. Um, so I think it's, it's pretty good from, from that standpoint. Going over to the uh, the other part of that kind of – uh, comment from uh, from whoever that was before, because now I can't remember. Um, Eric Stilato on Facebook is saying, Tommy Mack shouldn't start. Sorry, I said it. Uh, <laughs> listen, he had, two, he had two opportunities yesterday. Dude, um, he had an opportunity in the first couple minutes of the match where he pushed he it just wide. On right, but again, so this goes to what I said before, where if you got two teams trying to feel each other out and the ball's going to be in the middle of the field a lot, 
and we were playing kind of direct with them the first half. And when you're playing direct versus a team that's going to sit back, you're going to kind of have like a, a, a bit of a, a stopgap in the middle of the field, and it's going to be hard. And that's kind of where Tommy does his thing. He does it like from like corner of the box to corner of the box. He's a very central person in that, you know, that that area Mm -hmm. he likes to take his shots from the left you know he's good with the right foot but he will find his chances in the box within that width so you know you're playing a guy in the first half where you're not sure your tactics are going well it's hard and then he did a very Tommy McNamara thing after that scoring opportunity he kind of just blended in he did, dude. In the first, in the first like fifteen minutes of the match, he was making great runs, but wasn't but wasn't being found. It, dude, I'm sorry. Completely missed penalty call. I, I that was a tough one. I, I would like to see the replay again. I want to see it I mean, again, but dude, it was it. Naked eye in front of us. It was penalty. He the clipped fact the, he that clipped the, and then that was it. The fact that Kelly gave him the freaking yellow card for simulation was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. I don't know. I thought there was contact there. At least look at it. Look at it. I, this is the, Bush you know, was beat. Bush yeah, was beat. I have to find a replay, but I, I have to find a replay of the game. But it's the problem. They don't show it there because T- they don't want you to get on the ref. That's right. That's right. TJ oh, is saying he's the captain for a reason. I mean, here's that's 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 the other thing too. When you have Alex Ring on the field, who when Tommy Mack is not on the pitch, Alex Ring gets the armband. Well, both Alex Ring and Tommy Mack were on the pitch last night, and Tommy Mack got the armband. I so, think I think Alex might have given it to him because uh, Mark Frado called it. Uh, your captain was Alex Ring, and when the game started, Alex Ring was not the captain. So um, I, maybe Ring. I, I'm thinking Ring gave it to him out of respect because he's been there longer, and you know he's he's fighting for for a job essentially. You know he's fighting for minutes. So I mean, either one for me is fine, but uh, it's just, it's tough. It's a tough situation, and. It's, the dude is clearly talented. It's just that, you know, again, like Burgett, you go into it streaks where your only time to shine is very limited. And if you can't do anything, it's hard for people to stick up for you. Yep. And I don't mind sticking up for him because of the past. But, again, the past is the past, and this season is this season, and he's going to have to produce when called upon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, you know, the one thing uh, before we get to the other two goals that were absolutely fantastic – uh, I will say I'm very concerned about our midfield depth. Um, creativity out of the midfield when Afori and Ring are on the pitch is not good. Is not good. It it yeah. it forced us to go attack up the wings, which wasn't working because we had nobody to service the ball to in the box. So for me, you know, I talked a little bit about it on Monday when we had Ian on, dude. Alex Ring's passing needs to improve if he wants to be. That, that true number six and kind of create out of the midfield because Afori is going to sit too far back. And if Ring's going to be allowed to, to drift in and out, uh, drift in and out of, you know, box to box, you got to be able to create. You got to be able to put passes on guys' feet. And he's just not doing it, dude. Yeah. They're, they're coming up short, especially yesterday. Yesterday it was, was long. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was more, it was more noticeable yesterday. Um, but I agree. I, I think when you see a four, I think defensively he's sound in the air. He's very good. He's very good at winning duels. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me with a four is, is that he's very, a, very much a pivot player. Whereas that, uh, he doesn't move a lot. He doesn't carry the ball. He gets the ball and immediately looks to dish it off to somebody and he gets the ball and looks to dish it off to somebody. Um, and as a defensive, a, a true defensive midfielder, I guess you're trying to stay at home and, and do it that way and not get out of position. But, uh, if ring can't create and, and Maxi's being relied on to be more offensive and create scoring chances, you know, or get open, you've got a void there that you do need to fill. So I think I'm more comfortable with Alex ring being that defensive midfielder and give him a little bit more of a leash. And, you know, he can get his passes on when he wants because you're not expecting it from him. Um, but I think you need somebody that's going to fill in, that's going to take a 4 spot, um, that's going to be uh, almost as creative as Maxi. And then you can let either one of them, you know, roam freely. And one can be more attacking at times. One can be more creative at times. And they can kind of switch off and play off of each other. And that's dangerous. That's That's truly dangerous. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed in this transfer window. That is now... Two days old. And dude, there's really, uh, f- 
from from my account, there's really nothing rumored. Um, no, no, not much. The not only thing much. that's rumored <laughs> is a stadium, but uh, it's that too. That just can't seem to go away. Um, yeah, Wilson. Wilson is asking, should Sands see some minutes soon? I I don't know. I, I know that. Listen, you when you have guys like Medina and Lewis, all these young guys getting minutes uh, under Domet, you know, theoretically. Sands could see some minutes, but I don't think – I think we're too deep in the season for him to start being groomed for full senior team matches. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think he still needs a little bit more. I mean he did uh, – congratulations to the the academy team for actually winning the championship. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, and, to him, and to him for scoring the game-winning goal. Yeah, the game-winning PK. Um, impressive. And to, and to come back and be suited up the next day and be available uh, – for selection. That, Dude, that's they a, had to pick 18 players. I think that was all they had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I said before the game started. But uh, They were going to ask you, but you were busy doing the whole engagement thing. So Yeah, and then we probably got the same result. <laughs> probably <laughs> stay on the bench. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I would like to see him in minutes, but I think if you're going to see him in minutes, it's going to be in blowout games where you're up a lot or down a lot, or if you're trying to park the bus and you just want to throw another defender out there. Um, I don't think they're going to be super meaningful uh, as of right now. I think earlier in the year, if he was around more, um, that's fine. But uh, it's clear that Dome wants these young guys, when they have opportunities to go play in tournaments and get more minutes, he lets them go. And rightfully so. Get your minutes, get your time in, uh, get your legs moving, stay match fit, and be ready when called upon. And that's what he did. And it's it's great character building. It's great experiences. You know, if you're playing in high pressure situations, it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, the game is still meaningful to you at that time. And the games, the meaningfulness of the games won't change, whether it's, you know, a MLS playoff or a, a Academy championship game, you're still th- thriving to win. So for me, I, a couple more minutes would be nice to see just to see what's going on. And maybe next year you, you start grooming them in the off season for it. But as of right now, I think you're pretty much solid on the defensive line with, uh, all your defenders, so yeah, and I and I don't see him getting any time in the midfield. So um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't think so. I, yeah. I I don't think I would want him there either. As right now, I think I want somebody that's a little more seasoned, mm-hmm. somebody that's going to be a little more creative. He's definitely on the more defensive side um, because he's yep. been able to play center back and yep. and yep. defensive mid. So uh, I'm not saying he's not talented. He's very talented, very skilled, but I think the timing just right now is isn't quite where it should be for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, dude, last thing I wanted to just touch on real quick before we head over to the goals, the rest of the goals. Uh, Alex, I got to give a shout out to Alex Collins, dude, because he had a unreal. monstrous game. He's unreal. Um, just very, very solid, very, very clean. Uh, I, I mean, him and Ibiaga, but 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 Collins more so, um, and also Ben Sweat. I, I don't know who commented on it earlier, but somebody left a comment on Facebook. But the uh, if you look at the who score, dude, Ben Sweat got the highest rating. Yeah, really he, interesting. He's, well, again, he's one of these players when uh, a little hot and cold, but when he is hot, he is very good. Um, his height makes him a dangerous threat because he matches up well with a lot of the the guys uh, who are smaller. They they purposely put him on the field in in those spots. He's going to win those duels. And God help me, if you try sprinting at him, you you will not get him. You yeah. wanna, he is so elusive. Um, very seldom does he give away the ball. Very seldom, I should say, very seldom can you get the ball away from him. Does he give it away? I think that's his issue. I think he does give away the ball, um, you know, here and there. But ultimately, when he is on, he is such an asset. And he is pro- almost as equal to Monterita. I-, I don't think – I don't think I could – like, uh, you put them both on a scale of, of skill. I think they both offer pretty much the same amount of stuff. And whatever one lacks, the other one kind of makes up for. So it's it's they're they're very good, I, and I like seeing them play together on the field. Yeah, I was I was just gonna say that, but I'd like to I'd like to also compare minutes to minutes. Um, I would bet that Ben Sweat has had more minutes now than Matarita because of all of his injuries. Injury, I would yes. bet. I would think so. Um, but I I, I would put them toe to toe, dude. I really I really would, and you know the Ben Sweat thing. I I always say uh, Ben Sweat's touch is. Oh, it's beautiful. I got like yeah. next time I see him, I got to comment him. I comment him. I was like, dude, how, how do you do it? And his cutbacks are fantastic. What I want to see more of though, dude, I want, I want to see more, uh, dangerous balls from Ben sweat. 
I see he's he's not crossing the ball enough for me. He's got such a to, great yeah. left foot that he often tries to cut too far inside and play a, a ball on the ground to somebody that's usually not there. But we've yeah. seen him put in some wicked dangerous, wicked dangerous crosses, and yeah. uh, that's what I want to see more of from him. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're, I think you're right, and I think we we saw that a lot in the beginning of the season because he had those target players he had some height. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So now it's kind of a little difficult to do that, but I think you'll you'll ultimately see him get back to that. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, on to the goals, guys. Um, the other goals, I should say. So Matarita's cross goal. Let us know in the comments, guys. Was it a cross <laughs> or was it a shot? <laughs> Cross or a shot? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Sitting there, I was, you know, you're, now your your interest has been peaked. They scored a goal. It's one nothing. They're attacking. They're they're. They, you've got so many guys surrounding the box. Just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I see Medina's wide open, and I see Mata launch the ball. And as I see this ball is nowhere near Medina, I'm like, are you kidding me? He's wide open, a free header, the ball is guaranteed to go in the back of the net. And then all of a sudden the ball lands, and it's in the back of the net. (laughs) It was so deceiving from where we were sitting, it was unreal. Uh, If it was a shot, God bless him, because that was impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm just uh, just writing to Amanda here. We all love Mata. She says, I absolutely love Mata. We all do. Um, And and that that was another – you know that was another uh, icing on the cake moment for him, and and I'll credit him with I'll credit him with a shot, dude. I'll credit him with a shot. Yeah, I think he I think he knew what he was doing. It was doing. an ill fated cross that ended up. It was like penicillin. He accidentally scored a beautiful goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 David, I, David says it was a shot. You can tell that he saw Bush off his line and chipped him. Um, he did have his head down, dude. So I mean, like it's maybe. I'll give it to him. I'll give him a shot. I, I think it's funny because you so often practice, you know, driven shots from, from that location and you're trying to curl it to the back post, um, you know, around the keeper. He was like, screw it. I'm going to go over you. <laughs> and he and he put a little, little little English on it and, I mean, beautiful. Just unreal. Dude, I, we, I totally I, didn't I, see that ball going in. I got to say this, dude. Uh, Joey uh, Ramondelli is becoming yeah. – the the new Roddy Russell when Roddy Russell's not here because he just he just commented commented and said Mada four hundred and twenty six minutes sweat one thousand one hundred and sixty one minutes it's not even close not even close I'm good with it yeah listen uh, again the, the injuries uh, um Merced Merced says it, it was a shass it was a shot and a pass oh I like that it's what a button what button combination is that in FIFA <laughs> is <laughs> It, it was like it was kind of like a finesse shot, but didn't have enough power behind it. Oh, a sh- it was well, a shass. A sh- shass. Uh, Tommy sh- is jump is joining us, saying congratulations on the engagement. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, uh, Zoran is saying yes. I agree. He accidentally scored and it looked like a shot, but he was trying to cross. Um, I mean, listen. Either way, the ball ended up in the back of the net, which was absolutely stellar. Uh, which put put NYCFC up. Uh, two nothing, and then lo and behold, Monterita again with a fantastic cross, meant to be a cross, finding uh, finding Jonathan Lewis just a, a little trailing run there, dude, and um, that's buries that's the vision. header. That's vision. You you that's that is so hard to teach. Teaching people to be in the right place at the right time is not something that can be done. It is it's pure instinct. It's uh, I mean, you have to have some sort of telepathic thing going on with people on the other side of the pitch in order to figure those things out. I, God knows I can't do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here. But uh, it just again, the the offense that that those two guys create when they step on the field, uh, it's it's instant, unreal. Instant. And, and now it's a point where you've got to figure out if they can sustain it for a longer period of time. And what do you do? If you do put them out there for a longer period of time and it doesn't work, yep. not everyone's going to have a great game, but do you have an answer for those guys coming off the field? So if the guys in the field now aren't doing it and these two guys come in and do do it, do do it, they do it. They do do it. You know, who are you subbing in to be successful when they're not? 
And that's the issue. That's where the depth, you know, yeah. discussion needs to come into play. Yeah, and of course, of you've course. got to pick up a you got to pick up a few more guys. And the thing about soccer is, it, it's rumor wise, it, it's very easy to start rumors and spread rumors and and big names thrown around because that's who you see all the time. But it's a world sport. There are millions of players everywhere. It is incredibly hard to scout. It's not like baseball where you can go to like top six, ten schools or the two or three, you know, uh, countries in, in, in Central America and South America and find these guys. It's played everywhere. You can find a great player anywhere. You can find the next Cristiano Ronaldo playing somewhere. You know, it's, it's purely possible. Mm-hmm. But the amount of time it takes to look, that's why a lot of times, how many times does this team sign somebody and you're like, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. You know, but then you go watch their highlights and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I never heard of this guy. Yeah, well, that's, so that's how easy big it happen. is, exactly. So you're going to end up seeing, they might bring in somebody and you're going to be like, I wish they would have went for somebody bigger. This guy's going to be just as good, if not better, and you've never heard of him. Yep. So for me, I haven't heard any names at all. Um, but again, it's the beginning of the window and you've got guys that just finished their contract. You've got guys that are on vacation that aren't ready to talk contracts yet. So uh, I do think it needs to be addressed. I don't think we have the pieces. Do I think we have enough to go completely forward? If we're 100% healthy, I think we're okay, but we're not. And I don't think we're going to stay 100% healthy. I think here and there people will take their knocks. I do think we need to get at least two to three more players. Um, yeah, one, yeah. One sure. offensive, one mid, and one defensive. Especially when you're playing – Especially when you're playing three games in seven days, that's dangerous. Uh, especially yeah, when, especially when you're already facing injuries from some of your better players. Uh, you know that's uh, you run the risk, and that's well, what we that's where the depth comes in. We we're lucky yesterday that ring was able to come off because you've got a lead, and you can give one of your best players right. rest. And and yeah. that all be at ten minutes, but still rest is rest. It's it's ten less minutes than the guys would have. The guys you're facing next week, you know, mm-hmm. that guy might have played a full ninety, so that yep. could be a difference. Yeah. So for me, it's if you're when you have such, such a condensed schedule like this, it's so important to put the ball in the back of the net and give yourself a chance to rest these guys when healthy. Um, it's just it's super important, and it sucks that not as as fans, it's not terrible because hey, I love watching this team play. I'll watch them five days a week. I'll watch them seven days a week. It doesn't matter to me. But playing, it takes a toll on you. So rest is super important. And if you can do it within the game itself, it's 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 amazing what an extra ten minutes on the bench can do. Yep. Yeah. No. For sure. For sure. Um, guys, listen. Start putting in your votes for due to the match. This one's gonna be. Uh, this one's a tough. This one's one. actually kind of tough for me. So start putting those in due to the match against Montreal. Uh. Um, who you got to? Who who is your number one choice? I, I think I might have to give it to Matarita. I, I I know that I know that Medina scored the game winner before Matarita was even on the pitch. He got a goal and an assist, didn't he? But Matarita picked up a goal and an assist. Assist. They both did. Uh, I think. I'm not sure. I yes, can pull correct. it up. That is correct. He did. Okay. So you've got equal arguments there statistically for both of them. You do. Um, I don't know, dude. I just feel like when Matarita came on, there was more life and more fight and more action and more aggression going forward. Um, and and that's just – that's why I think I got to give it to Matarita. For coming in, he, he, he's, he's, he's struggling with injury. It's very easy to say we're going to give it to Medina. He had his breakout game. Fantastic, but I'm sorry. You look at a guy like Matarita who's putting in the work, who struggled with injury, had to leave the World Cup early, comes into a match, the team gets electrified, and magically you don't you don't just stop at one nothing, you go up to three. Because of the, Ronald Matarita. I think the biggest difference is that is Medina's position. That's Medina's job. That is not really Matarita's job. That if you're if you were treating Matarita as he was when he started, he's a traditional uh, fullback. He's playing up the field in the final third, so it's not expected. We know he can do it, but do I expect that of him? No, I do not expect him to score goals. I yep. expect him to be solid and yep. shut down plays and maybe make a key pass. But to score the way he was and to make those key passes, that's why for me, I'm giving him the edge over Medina. Yeah, dude, I got we got votes. We got a lot of votes for Maxi in the comments here. 
Yeah, listen, Maxi Maxi is is the engine. He he is the engine. For me, I think he is so all over the field that sometimes he does get lost just because you don't really notice it because I mean the, the height factor number 1 is is there, so it's hard to to see. But he does a great job of of, of being elusive and, and he really wasn't fouled too many times yesterday, I don't think. Yeah. I think you, usually he gets fouled a lot more. The last couple of games, it's been kind of tame with fouls against him. But um, I think you're, he's, he is slowly building himself into that Callens Chanel role where they're doing their job exceptionally well, and now it's become expected. So it's like it, it's hard to like you, when he scores a goal and gets an assist. It's a different, little bit of a different story. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. when he's just doing what he's supposed to be doing, it, it's like I get it. This is what you're supposed to be doing, right? And it's not like I'm saying it's a bad thing. It's just that you're getting a little bit extra from other people in different departments where you're not expecting it. Where you wouldn't expect it, exactly. And that's that's kind of why I got to give it to Moderita. There yeah. are some votes, dude. There are some votes in the comments that uh, you and Lauren get the dudes of the match because of the engagement. <laughs> Guys, if, um, if you want to give the dude of the match to Anthony and Lauren for this match, for getting engaged at halftime, <laughs> smash the like button, and if not, we're going to give it to Mata. So we're going to give you like 10 seconds to let us know if you want to give Anthony and Lauren the dude and dudette of the match for this one. And there go the likes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. We will we will graciously accept, but we will give it over to Ronald Moderita because I think he deserved it. Oh, boy. Uh, they are smashing the like button. You'll I be think, the- listen, I – I will I will asterisk this one and I'll be like, yeah, we know what happened this game. <laughs> we know what happened. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Here's here's what we'll do. Lauren, if you're in the stream right now, first of all, congratulations again. And second of all, update the Google Doc. You guys get a couple of the match, and Moderita gets the dude of the match for this one. We're gonna call it that because we get moment moment of the match. There you the go. Turning point match <laughs> MOTM there you go um so yeah uh Moderita's gonna get it from an NYC dude the likes are going absolutely berserk here <laughs> I love you guys <laughs> <laughs> Christina is saying PS that proposal pick on Insta is epic many congrats and a lifetime of happiness thank you thank you thank you David Thanks. is saying yes for Aunt and Lauren and Joey is saying do it yeah it's just everybody everybody loves you guys oh so, very very cool all right Really, really quick, because uh, we're coming up on quite a bit of time that we've been in the stream, which is pretty awesome. Dude, really quick, in 10 seconds, what the hell is going on with the stadium? <laughs> so, uh, really quickly, so if you were paying attention at all, this kind of snuck up on everybody. Uh, a company purchased the GAL Elevator Company site, which is located um, – adjacent to the Metro North Railroad Station. It's that funky-looking building with, like, triangles on top. It's right across from the old Yankee Stadium parking lot. That was the original locate, proposed location for NYCFC Stadium when Mayor Bloomberg was in office. Um, they had everything worked up, and then he ended up, you know, leaving office, and things kind of fell apart from there with de Blasio. Uh, so now uh, the fact that there's a buyer and the land is available. That buyer uh, supposedly wants to lease the land to NYCFC for a stadium, affordable housing, um, commercial use, and a park. Um, that's a lot to fit in that small little space. But I, judging by the numbers that I've heard from what they want to do with the stadium, which is right around 20. It was a New York 000, Times article, right? Yeah, New York Times article. You could, uh, Yes, New York Times um, you can go find it and, and read it. It's very interesting as to what's going on. This is probably one of the more solid things that's happened in stadium news. Um, it's it's not getting the hype as as the rendering was because I think that that kind of like brought everybody's hopes up and then completely smashed them. So uh, take it uh, with a grain of salt. I, I don't know. Joey is saying let's hold our breath, not expecting much at this point. Which yeah, I, I'm not, but uh. As far as it, as the standpoint for the fans go, you're already getting you know almost twenty thousand people average in the Bronx. 
So putting a stadium there, it's one of the easier boroughs to get to, um, especially coming from other non boroughs, you know, upstate, like, like, like where, you know, Westchester and where we're coming from, there are quite a few fans up that way. So, um, it's it's a really solid location and it, it's all the parking is there all the, the the mass transit is there it's a really good spot and uh I, I hope this is it i hope this is finally it but again i'm not you know holding We're my just breath reporting on what we see this is still but this is what i'm i'm here so. specula- speculative but uh, if you go if you go on google maps and you want to check out the area and try to like finagle a you know a shot and see where it is uh 153rd street runs directly diagonal within this area of what they're trying to do um so it's it's pretty uh pretty easy to see that you could fit uh definitely fit a stadium there it's just a matter of i think it's probably going to be something that's a little bit more tall rather than wide um just because you're that's really the only way you're going to be able to fit anything there so Uh, so keep an eye on that. It's it's it sounds like it's got a little bit of legs, but uh, more to come. I'm long, sure. Long ways, long ways to go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, guys, before we wrap up the show here, uh, once again, smash the like button for Antonino and Lauren on getting engaged. It's freaking awesome. Smash it one more time for yeah. them. And uh, and last but not least, guys, uh, World Cup final is happening. In a couple days, and I want to know who's going to win. Uh, who you got, got? Who you got? You got France or Croatia? Got? Leave it in the comments. Let us know what you guys think, dude. Who you got? This is one of the tough ones. This one's really, really difficult. I'm going to go with Croatia. Get the hell out of here. I'm going to go with Croatia just because it's not expected. It's not what's expected. I think a lot of people are leaning towards France. And France is a much faster team, but I think the experience of Croatia and all these guys, um, you're talking about a, a team that's full of people. <laughs> Henry who says execute. England. <laughs> you know, they, they, that saying, it, it's coming home, they really messed it up. It's we're, we're coming home. home. <laughs> sorry, Coco. I see you're still in sorry, here. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, she hates us. Will that have been a, a crazy final? Now, Absolutely. I, I will say that, dude. I will say that. And I will say that, Coco. Don't go anywhere yet. I really did want to see that final. That yeah, would have that, been epic. I think you're talking about viewership-wise, that would have put numbers in the astronomical level. I think it would have been insane. I do think you, you lose a couple. Not, I don't know if you lose a couple, but it's definitely not as exciting. But again, uh, when you talk about a team like Croatia, you're talking about a lot of players who are – supplemental players that play with superstars, world-known superstars. Like, Luka Modric could walk down the street, and you might not know who he is. But if Messi walks down the street, you're like, that's that's Messi. You're getting a lot of guys who quietly do their job. You don't get these big ego-inflated guys. You get guys that just give their all day in and day out on the pitch. They do a fantastic job. They get the job done when, it, when it's called upon them. Uh, how many times has Mandzukic scored for Juventus coming off the bench? It's it's unreal. Uh, he's been phenomenal. Rakitic, uh, Perisic, all these guys are doing phenomenal jobs. And then you got France that's young, healthy, fresh, vibrant, and they got a lot of pace. So this is like two diff- two totally different things happening. It's going to be crazy to see. If, if Croatia can stop the speed of France, I think you're going to have a hell of a game. Mainly Mbappe. Yeah, let me tell you something. That guy's gonna get paid. I love it. That guy is love going to get play. paid, and whatever league he goes to is gonna thrive because he is. He, I, I honestly think he is like the next superstar. He's like his name. In a few years, his name is gonna be in the pool with Neymar and all yep. these guys. Oh hell He's yeah, be that good. Yep. he'll be that good if he keeps that going. Well, guys, uh, who do they got? Who do they got in the comments? Who, oh, who, dude, it's it's a mishmash here. I I, I see more France. Yeah. Um, I definitely see more France in this, but uh, I see London. I see France. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty big mix, though. The comments are pretty mixed. I, I do see a lot of Croatia as well. So it's going to be a good game no matter what. I think we're going to see a really good final. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, we'll be together. Maybe we should do something live at halftime. Maybe. Maybe we will. A little fun. Maybe. 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 <laughs> Well, either way, if you guys don't see us during the World Cup final, we will definitely be uh, back on Monday night for episode 114. 
And, uh, yeah. Oh, real quick here, dude. Daniel Patrick is uh, coming in. He says, what's up, dudes? Just finished up a softball game, so I'm popping in late. Just wanted to say congrats to Ant. It was nice to meet you guys yesterday for a quick minute. Absolutely. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, it was funny. He came up, like, in the middle of he, all of the shenanigans. Was, and I was, was like, wrong, wrong place dude, wrong. what's up, man? <laughs> He was in the wrong place at the right time right there. Yeah, no, that was great. Well, thanks thanks for um, stopping by and saying hello. We really do appreciate it. Um, and we're going to be there again. Uh, Christina says it's going to be a gorgeous final. What a what a cup that it has been. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, if you guys been, do want to come great. and say hi to us. Oh, it's been pho- absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. like, w- like incredible. Top to bottom. Top to bottom. One of the best ones. Yeah, for sure. Um, the uh, I do not know what the hell I was just going to say. We're sitting in the same seats, yes. We're sitting in the same seats, obviously. No, we're we're in 109, guys. If you want to come and say hi, uh, just shoot us a message on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever. And uh, if you want to get together and just chit chat about NYCFC during the game on uh, Saturday night, because we will be there against Columbus. Hopefully, picking up nine points out of nine will be difficult to do on a uh, very exhausted team that's riddled with injury. But they are at home, and they will have that home field advantage for sure. For sure going to be very exciting. So uh, NYCFC Saturday night, World Cup final, France-Croatia on Sunday. It's going to be a soccer-packed weekend. Uh, we will be back on Monday night, 8 p.m. for episode 113. Uh, leave us a review, guys. So oh, before I forget, Facebook or iTunes, no matter where you're listening or where you're watching, please leave us a review. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, drop a comment. Let us know how you like it. And uh, let us know what you think of the show. It really helps us make this yes. better for you guys. Yes. Also, if you do come up to us, and say, hey, dudes in blue, right? And then shake our hands. Please let us know who you are kindly. We know, like, all of you. Like, like, <laughs> I, I, like, like by name, I know all of you. But by face, I don't know everyone. Just because sometimes your profile pictures are, are different or you have different things up there. But I do feel awkward sometimes because I don't know what to say to people who I don't – like, I want to know who you are. Like, I really want to meet you. Like, I want to be like – I want to be your friend. I, I want to be like, hey, what's up when I see you next time? I don't want to have I don't want to have no name ready when I see you the second time around. So, uh, yeah, come up and be like, hey, let us know who you are if, if we don't already know. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's a little Mr. Rogers action. There you go. Well, guys, hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy the match on Saturday and the match on Sunday. And we'll be back on Monday night. But until then, guys, stay blue. See ya. Peace.